Hi guys, this is SDJRS and F88 speaking with another instalment on the railway room. So welcome to this third instalment on the construction of the railway room and it's been a couple of weeks since the last update but there has been a number of major changes. So without further ado, let's get straight into the update. So one of the biggest changes since the previous update is I finally got round to varnishing the baseboards and work surfaces. So as you can see, we got an area which has been varnished and an area that has not been varnished. Now this is going to have part of the layer on it, which is the reason why I haven't decided to varnish that area. But you can see it's made a huge difference already. One thing I noticed with the non-varnished areas was that over time, if you sort of rubbed it when I was moving stuff around and set stuff up on here, I noticed that the blue paint was coming off on my fingers, which is of course not ideal, especially on a modelling workbench. So varnish was um, needed to obviously seal it all in. So I used this, I used a polyurethane um, wood varnish and I applied it in one thin layer with a brush. But as you can see, it's come out really, really deep. It looks like I've done about four or five layers on there. Uh, and at first I was worried that it was too glossy, but it started to grow on me and I'm really, really pleased with how it's turned out. And it's already helped no end. Uh, I've done the workbenches, all the shelves, and it's come in really handy on the workbench, uh, to say the least already. I've been doing some modeling on there and I spilt some paint. So I quickly grabbed a cloth and to wipe up the spillage and it came straight off, which is you know, ideal. If that varnish hadn't been on there, that paint would have surely gone straight into the grain of the wood. There would have been a huge, great splodge of engineering blue uh, paint absolutely everywhere. So I'm really, really pleased with how it's turned out. So as you can see, currently set up on the workbench is once again the double O gauge photoplank. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been very busy doing some filming for Railway Modeler and of course uh, for videos for you guys on the channel as well, uh, featuring all manner of different scales. So we've got double O, N, double O nine, which is, I used the N gauge plank, so I sort of cheated there, and also O gauge videos. Now, those photo planks have come in, um, you know, use no end while I haven't got a sort of main layer set up for these review videos um, for a railway modeler. So it really has been quite handy. But anyway, as you can see, I've got one set up right here, the 00 one, and you can see we've got one well, of the new EFE austerities on there in the rather eye-catching or ghastly, whichever way you look at it, NCB blue and yellow livery. Now, I absolutely love this livery. I think it really suits the model really, really well just because it's so different. Now the idea is this will be weathered and detailed up at some point of course, um, hopefully possibly for a future article in Railway Modeler magazine. The locomotive carried a number of interesting features while in service, especially when it was really grimy and dirty including a chalked on face which is something I really want to try and add to this model so stay tuned for that. There's been uh, one addition to this photo plank in particular. Uh, I've got a new building which I interchange as with all the buildings on there and that is this little plate layers hut. Now this features in the up and coming um, railway model, which is the January 2021 issue, which should be on sale from the 10th of December. And basically it's a little project using corrugated iron sheets, which are created from a takeaway tray. So a really fun little article. It's something I did for all the corrugated sheets on Amiens 1918, so well worth checking out. Now, as mentioned, um, the plank has been used for a number of review samples and in the last video, I gave a little teaser of a video that was coming up for the magazine uh, and a locomotive, which I sound edited. And you really, really, guys really enjoyed that. So I'm going to do the same for this one. So uh, without further ado, here's a little tease of a very eagerly anticipated model that will hopefully soon feature on the channel as part of a new sound edit.
So one of the most asked questions I've had from the previous update was of course about the LED light strips. And I know a number of you guys were really impressed by them and want to get hold of one for yourselves. So I've popped a link in the description of that video and of course I'm going to do the same now so do check out the description below and there'll be uh, a link to b &Q, which is where I source these light strips from. Uh, I thought they were so good in fact from your positive feedback I actually purchased a second one which I've installed above Fry Summerdale. Now as you know I had the layout running in the previous update and I've done a few subsequent running sessions since and I noticed that the layout wasn't as bright and vibrant as what it was when it was in the natural light in the conservatory and what I found out is the shelf above is cutting off quite a lot of the light that would ordinarily go in on top of the layout so the little LED strip that's in there um, which is ideal for show so you've got some light coming in on top um, just isn't cutting it when it's on the shelf and it's got to illuminate pretty much the whole layout by itself so I've added this LED light strip in above and as you can see it makes a world of difference to the scene, it makes it look a lot more natural. So I've got the box here so if any of you want to read the details, if you just pause your screen now hopefully you'll be able to read some of the, sort of the, the details and jargon on the lighting. But of course, uh, link in the description below for those of you who want to get your hands on one. So as well as the addition of the lighting, I've also made a few modifications to the baseboard. First of all is this vertical section here. Now this basically separates the workbench from the layout. Now it does have its pluses and minuses. Uh, first of all, the pluses, it adds extra strength to the shelf above, not that it really needs it, but it's just a little sort of fell safe there. Um, it also allows me to build up the landscaping for Lincoln Vale, which of course we'll come on to in a moment. Um, allowing me to sort of build the rolling hills and include Devonshire Tunnel, which you can just see there. Um, you can see I've cut a hole in the board uh, to allow the train to run through. And basically it acts as a support so I can actually build up that landscaping and also something like a curve the back scene around on as well. Now the downsides to this is if I step back, you can see the void behind the board is now um, sort of cut off uh, from the natural light from the window and the light bar on the workbench itself doesn't quite reach. So it's a bit dark in that corner there. However, that shouldn't be a problem. One of the biggest sort of perks I hope to come from having this section here is to allow me to add a number of extra shelves in here for storing locomotives and rolling stock. At the moment, the locomotives are kept in their boxes, which of course they, you, you see them on the shelves, so all the, the branded Hornby and Batman boxes, which is great for keeping the models safe. However, it takes a long time to get the models in and out of the boxes. And if you add some of the uh, extra details, which I plan to do to those models, they won't fit back in. So the idea is I'll have my special stock boxes, which will allow me to store my locomotives and rolling stock all together, and hopefully have them all stacked up in this section here. So that is something that I plan to do, hopefully in the not too distant future. The next section of the board that's been added in is this triangle section here. Now what this does is it allows the scene to be extended out even further. I was trying out uh, different camera angles uh, around sort of the, the, the sort of the curve that I've temporarily got set up on here. And one of the most iconic shots I want to recreate in Lincoln Vale is from the far side of the viaduct by the cutting, looking across the viaduct into Devonshire Tunnel. It's one of the most iconic shots that was filmed on the line in its heyday. However, the problem with having the camera just there is you could see the floor and the edge of the baseboard. Uh, which is obviously not ideal if you're trying to recreate a realistic scene. So what I've done is I've added this small section in and it's allowed me to extend the scene out into the room just, a, just enough that it will allow me to put scenery on there and hopefully uh, cut off the edge of the board from the shot so you get this whole sort of feel that you're actually in the rolling countryside of Lincoln Vale. Of course, one of the biggest features for this is Watery Bottom Viaduct which I have mentioned in the previous update, and I've finally made a start on. So without further ado, I'm going to go back to the workbench and take a look at what I've been working on. So this is it. This is the start of Watery Bottom Viaduct. 
Now there's been a lot of research going into this and I would like to thank all the modelers that have helped out uh, supplying images and of course uh, books to research this bridge from. Now the idea is this bridge as you can see is currently a work in project, uh, progress and this will hopefully feature as a future article as well for Railway Modeler showing how I've constructed a representation of the bridge. As mentioned it's not going to be 100% accurate due to the constraints of the baseboards and all that so it's slightly um, uh, shorter I think and it's slightly um, in length and it's going to be slightly wider as well to allow for the curve on there as well but the idea is the main features which make this bridge so iconic uh, being the patchwork quilt it is will hopefully all be fe uh, featured on there. So what the bridge is constructed from is three of the wheels brick arch bridges which I've uh, sort of stitched together I've cut them down and stitched them together I've raised the height of them and I've created the sort of the top wall along there as well as the sort of the, the parapets at the end there as well. Uh, one thing I have done, which of course makes the bridge so iconic, is that it's a blend of stonework and brick. Uh, originally it was a stone structure, but gradually over time, as the structure deteriorated, they replaced it with brickwork. And till the sort of the end of steam, sort of round, I think around the 1960s, late 1950s, 1960s, the majority of the bridge had been replaced with brickwork, uh, which is how this bridge is going to be depicted. But there were stones still left in there and as you can see I've actually carefully cut away sections of the bridge and um, created this almost sort of jigsaw puzzle effect where I slotted in sections of Will's stonework into the bridge. I'm really really pleased with how it's turned out but my goodness what a, you know, a lot of work it was. Uh, so yeah I'm really really pleased with how it's looking so far but as you can see there's still a long way to go. Now the idea for getting this bridge done before I actually start building up the landscaping and stuff is this bridge gauges the whole height for the layout so it's extremely important I get it right. So hopefully over the next couple of weeks I plan to crack on with this, uh, get this um, finished so then I can start moving on to the landscaping. So the landscaping and all the sort of terrain is going to be built up from these. These are Celotex sheets, uh, the sort of stuff you insulate your loft with. Now the reason for choosing them is one, they are extremely easy to cut, uh, they're relatively cheap for the amount of material you get, which is, you know, I'm going to need a lot to do the whole room. Um, and also, it should help with the sound dampening um, rather than having the track laid directly to the baseboards. So as you can see, I've got a couple of sections already sort of cut roughly to shape, and you can see I've left a gap there for the viaduct. But the idea is these will obviously all be chamfered in to allow me to insert the viaduct in there and create the rolling hills. Now, I believe, uh, judging by the height of the viaduct and sort of my calculations, I'll probably need another sort of height up. So at the moment, these are three um, sheets stacked on top of each other. I think I'm going to need to go for four, which works at about 10 centimetres. Each sheet is uh, 2.5 centimetres or 25 millimetres. So um, yeah, I'm going to probably need an extra one on there for height and then of course when we get to the cutting behind me there'll be more stacked up and sort of to create the cutting there as well. Now this will be extended around on the workbench, there'll be a section that's probably about as wide, maybe a tiny bit thinner than the photo plank. So where the photo plank's to at the moment, there will be a long thin sort of strip that curls around at either end and that will basically be where the fiddle yard's to, so it'll be up in the air and away from the stuff I'm working on, but allows me easy access to obviously set up and run the trains and allow me to run multiple trains at the same time on the layout. Of course, all of that will be faced off with hopefully a nice bit of uh, thin woodwork, so you don't see any of this horrible exposed foam uh, you know, there, so it will hopefully all look you know, nice once complete. One problem with Celotex though is it's extremely messy to cut and shape. So what I'm doing is I'm going to draw out the rough height and all that once I've got the viaduct in place and then everything will go outside and be sanded down outside and the idea is I'll only do minimal changes up in here because as you can imagine dust will get everywhere. So I don't want to get dust you know, in places on here that I can't really get out and of course you, you'll find it for, forever basically. So the idea is all this is going to be shaped outside and then once it's done it will then be covered in a layer of PVA to seal it all in before I then start painting and adding the scenery to it. So yeah, let me know what you think of that. Hopefully that will all go to plan and as you can see I've started roughly setting out the track. We've got the tunnel mouth over there. Um, so yeah, it's all starting to come together. Now one very exciting thing that I haven't mentioned is there is the possibility that I'm not the only one filming this. Now, 
I've had a visit from a camera crew and I can't really say too much just yet but basically stay tuned as I might not be the only one that's doing updates on Lincoln Bell. So watch this space. And finally, while we're on the subject of surprises, uh, there is a YouTube channel out there called Drive Tribe, which is hosted by James May, Jeremy Clarkson, and Richard Hammond, and a number of other famous faces. And it's all about cars and you know some of the things they get up to. I know that James May recently bought a pub on there, uh, so it basically follows their sort of their, their endeavours, and uh, it really is an interesting channel. And anyway, back last year, one particular series ran by James May uh, took my eye in particular, which was his Mail Time series. And he's just released the last video of the series, as, as you'll see in that video, it's been gradually getting out of hand, where you know, fans have been sending in random bits of junk and stuff to him, for him to unbox and review. Anyway, I thought it'd be quite funny to send James a little gift. And anyway, in the latest video, which I'll pop a little link in the description below, he actually opened the gift and the letter I sent him. And I had a number of messages come through to me because I didn't know that the video had been released. And a number of people said, James has just unboxed a mysterious model train with some figures that look very similar to the ones that you do. And I knew as soon as they said that, that he'd opened up my gift. And yeah, his reaction is priceless. Um, you know, I would like to say a massive thank you to James, mate, if you're watching this video, of course, uh, which, you know, I doubt, but if you are, that'd be absolutely amazing if you are. And I hope you enjoy the gift. So if you want a bit of a laugh, do check out that video. It really is a great series. And yeah, I'd like to say a massive thank you to James May for opening that gift on air. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this update on the layout. I'm really, really pleased with how the progress is coming on. Of course, all the sort of progress now is sort of going to be you know, getting a few little final bits and pieces in here. And of course, focusing on the build of Lincoln Bell. Of course, this all depends on the viaduct, which could be very, very time consuming. So do bear with me until the next update, because I'm going to try and take my time on that viaduct, uh, as there's a lot of work to go in there. And that is the focal point of the layout. And I want to try and get that right. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this update. And all that's left for me to say is this has been SDJR Senate 88 speaking. And thanks for watching.